Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for revenge. Here's our man of the week, the merchant of venom, Mr. Don Rickles. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> honored guests, Monsignor Duffy, and Rabbi Kinbite, and uh, Deacon Leroy. <laughs> Some jerks in the back know Deacon Leroy. <laughs> well, uh, kiss my gathering. It is a Without question, in fairness to Mr. Dean Martin, this has been one of the longest evenings I've ever spent in my life. Except for the, for the drunk. It was just charming. I know the hour is late. The dinner was absolutely fantastic, I must say that. A bowl of peanuts and water with a guppy in it. One of the cheapest. I would like to tell you something about this. They make it seem to you out there in television land that we're all here with big turkey dinner or something going, Bleh. These people are all called, and my name is mentioned, like he don't care. He's, he's at home with his wife going, everybody loves him, He doesn't know he's here right now. But he's a millionaire, and he says, hey, as a favor, I'll come down and uh, we'll kid with the Jew for a couple hours. I say to you, Dean, with all sincerity, if Italy goes to war, so help me, I'll back the other side. <laughs> Could you imagine if Italy was at war and he was a general? Hey, I think, I think we ought to attack. <laughs> but I'd like to say, I'd like to clear up a matter right off the bat and tell you from the top. Tonight I'm very delighted because this is a long road. I had my first big break on the Dean Martin show through Dean and Greg Garrison, his producer, when they put me on the show for the first time with every celebrity in Hollywood, and I was completely soaking, perspiring to the, to the death of me. And I'd like to say right out in front, so it's not lost in tape, that I thank you, Dean, really, because if it wasn't your wonderful belief and believing in me and Greg, uh, really, maybe this day would not have come about. And I'm forever grateful to you. Really. I've been, I've been, Dean said he'll drink to that. God bless you, Dean. His lovely wife sits by the bed every night saying, try to reach the medicine. <laughs> of course, when you go this time, a lot of women are going to collect. No, he's got a lovely wife. His lovely wife, what's her name? Kasha? Catherine, she's a lovely girl. You'll find her in the lobby later going, would you buy me a sweater? <laughs> Poverty stricken broad, it's embarrassing, it really. I'd like to say, going down the line, uh, first of all, Nipsey Russell, uh, a dear friend. We've many, many times you've asked to hang out with me, but I felt it embarrassing. <laughs> I being a Jew, I don't need no watermelon truck around me. I'll tell you that right now. And don't put that over your head. A couple of guys from Georgia will come up here. But I love you, Nipsey. Black or white, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Our society today, we are all brothers in arms, as Nipsey told you people out there. We just got to get America to buy that. <laughs> now, I love Nipsey. I... Oh, we have a seal in the crowd. <laughs> I'd like to say to Telly Savalas from the bottom of my heart, really, Telly, I kid you. I've never liked you as an actor. <laughs> and Telly's the kind of guy with no money that keeps saying to the Russian girls, you want to fool around? <laughs> now, 
now his wife is listening in, that's in humor, because he has wonderful family and a wonderful wife, and Telly and all of us in Yugoslavia were lonely, and we thought of our wives constantly. <laughs> May we be paralyzed, God forbid, if we would lie. <laughs> But being in Yugoslavia, the biggest excitement we had was watching Tito's dog go to the bathroom. <laughs> so you must understand. Bob Newhart made the claim that he was my closest friend. I have never met Bob Newhart. <laughs> I'll put it to you another way. Bob Newhart goes to many gay parties. <laughs> That's why you hear him going, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, want, you want to dance? <laughs> Cliff Robinson is a fantastic actor. Cliff is sort of like Clint Eastwood, kind of down, kind of, well, you died, Cliff. That's what you did. <laughs> Cliff is the type of guy, you're in a raft and you're alone and you're a survivor and Cliff Robinson is the guy with you and you want the shark to bite you on the tushy <laughs> so you have a little excitement. But you're a fantastic actor, Cliff. You've told me that many, many times. And uh, I wish you in your career a lot of luck, really. You're a your marvelous. And thank you for coming. We've been so close. <laughs> I met the guy once buying a paper. But thanks, Cliff, for coming by. I know how busy you are with your busy schedule, standing by the studio gate at Warner Brothers, saying to the top of the gate, won't, won't, won't anybody see me? <laughs> but good luck to you. Rowan and Martin, you were completely bad. <laughs> but I say this to Dick and Dan, one of the great teams. They hang out together when... When Dan went on his raft around the world, Dick was saying, I hope the wind shifts. <laughs> but they're a, great, they're a great team. They've had great success. They're going to be on NBC again this year. Look at this. They both went, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but uh, I love you both and you're marvelous men. Uh, Jack Klugman, I say from the bottom of my heart, Tony Randall feels he can work alone in the series. <laughs> You are annoying. I never knew you had that much hair. You can't even tell. To see Jack Klugman in real life, you can ski off him and Telly Savalas. Joey Bishop, we won't bother you. I know you're just resting. We kid, Joey. I know him a long time. And I said to Joey when I got married, I said, Joey, I got married. He said, hey, you, you want to see my car? Joey and Cliff Robinson could hang out together. The two of you could just sit in a steam room and watch towels roll up. Lorne Green, one of the great Jewish men of our time, who was, uh, that's kind of funny because we all have backgrounds and he's a great American and to be Pop Cartwright and stand around, it always struck me funny to see this man in Bonanza saying, all right, well, boys, let's get the horses up. No Jew rallies horses around. No way. We sit in a big wagon and go, bring, bring those horses over here. Rich Little, someday you gotta do you and maybe your wife will leave you. <laughs> you're a magnificent man, Foster Brooks. I cannot say your talent goes without speaking. You are a marvelous man, really. <laughs> Pat Henry is my dear friend. He knows Frank Sinatra personally. In fact, they're that close. When Frank takes his car out, Pat runs in front of the car and checks for mines. <laughs> You don't find guys with that kind of loyalty anymore. 